I'm going to try the sermon in a creative way. I'm going to read from uh, the three Gospels where the, the Annunciation of the Coming of the Christborn Child is announced. We will follow Matthew's tradition, and then I want us to look at Luke, and then we're going to look at the Gospel of John as I focus upon the sermon this morning, Worshiping the Baby Jesus. And the book of Matthew gives us a different twist on the birth of Jesus. The book of Matthew, as we know, was written to a Jewish Christian audience, and uh, the, the writer of the book of Matthew is trying very hard to show that Jesus was coming from the uh, direct descent, uh, lineage of King David. But there were three, there were Magi men who actually were trying to figure out where the Christ-born child was coming. And so in chapter 2 of Matthew, it says, Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, and during the time of the King Herod, Magi the ki from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been both king of Jews? We saw the star when it rose, and have come to worship him. That's a key word. We have come to worship him. And then in the book of Luke, we see the reference to the Christ-born child in verse 12, Luke chapter 2, verse 12. It says, this will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in clothes and lying in a manger. And then if we go to the Gospel of John, we see these words. It says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning, and through him all things were made, and without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of mankind. The light shines in the darkness and the darkness has not overcome it. And if we go down to verse uh, number 8, it says, He himself was not the light. He came to only be a witness of the light. Worship the baby Jesus. We are in a time where we are struggling with worship. We're in a time where we are struggling with what does it mean to worship. We're struggling in a time with great difficulties globally, where we have a lot of confusion about what is worship. Often worship is focused upon Worshipping human beings. And in this part of the world, the United States of America, we worship a lot of false idols. We worship things that have no real meaning. We have worship all kinds of idols. Christmas is a time where we worship a lot of symbols and we forget the real focus of Christmas. Christmas is often a time where we are confused about what we are to do and who should we worship. Often when we think about worship, we think about worship in terms of entertainment. This is probably one of the parts of the world where you have to really tell people how to worship. In this part of the world, we have to tell people to say, let's stand and give God the praise. But I've been to parts of the world. I remember in South America, when I was worshiping in Guyana, there was nobody who had to tell people to stand up and worship God. I remember in South America, Guyana, I was in a little church outside of Georgetown, and the people came to church to worship. 
I remember that little church out in the, the country area of Georgetown in Guyana, South America, when I was called to preach on a dark, gloomy night, people came to church to worship. I remember the people shining their little flashlights in the darkness. And I remember when they came inside this building to worship, they all screamed, to God be the glory. And I thought about how in this part of the world, that is not always true. We have to tell people to worship here. Worship is, from our perspective, about being directed towards someone who is greater than us. Worship in this context of the scriptures is about worshiping someone who is not an adult, but in this context of the scripture, we see people who are worshiping a baby. They are worshiping a baby that was born in Bethlehem. They're worshiping this child that was born to Mary, and in Matthew's gospel, we see the Magi men who are trying to figure out where this baby was born. So the Magi men took a journey to Judea because they wanted to behold the baby that was born according to the star that had directed them. Can you imagine in Jesus' time all the babies that were born? Can you imagine how many other babies were born at the same time that Jesus was born? But the fact that Jesus was born in Bethlehem in the days of King Herod, we see that this baby was worshipped in a different way. They wanted to know where is this baby who has been born the king of Jews. And in Matthew's gospel it says that we have seen the star in the east and the three magi men come to worship him. We don't often hear about the wise men But Matthew's gospel wants to show us that the wise men were directed according to what we call biblical prophecy to show that Jesus was the lineage from the son of David. All of these messianic terms that we see in the gospels, Matthew likes to call Jesus the son of David, Luke likes to refer to Jesus as the Son of Man. Mark uses the term Son of God, and these are all what we call the messianic titles that the Gospels use to describe Jesus as the one who was the King of Kings. But they all do something that requires worship. What is worship? Why do we worship? Why do we come together on Christmas Eve to remember the birth of the one who was born so long ago? Why do we worship? Is it it worthy that we worship the Christ-born child again? Is Is it worthy that we worship? Oh, it's worthy that we worship. It's worthy that we remind ourselves that worship is the crux of how, why we have been created as human beings. We, we were created to worship. We were created to, to not worship human beings, but we were created to worship God. I know a lot of us like to worship human beings, and let me tell you, that when you focus your your worship on human beings, you will always be disappointed. Because human beings 
have flaws and, and errors. They have all kinds of issues, but there's something about turning our worship to God that makes us have permanent peace. We see it in Matthew's gospel where Matthew says that we should seek ye first the kingdom of God and all of his righteousness and all of these things shall be added unto us. God is worthy of our worship. God is worthy of our worship. God is worthy because God is God all by God's self. God is God. God is bigger. And, and in, Luke, in John's gospel, it says the word became flesh. And so when, when we see the baby Jesus born in Bethlehem, we are all looking at God. That's mind-boggling. We had never seen God before. Moses, Abraham, and all of the Old Testament prophets had never seen God. But in the New Testament, we get a glimpse of what God looks like. So when Mary is holding the baby Jesus in her arms, she's holding God in her arms. Oh, this is mind-boggling. God is in the form of a baby. God is in the form of a baby. Let me, find, let me tell you, there's something about, about, about babies. I believe that God chose the form of a baby because you notice when babies are born, nobody runs. Everybody likes babies. I love babies. Anybody not like babies out there? There's something about a baby that attracts people. People look into into and say, oh, it's a little boy, it's a, it's a little girl, and there's a tendency to want to touch the baby. That shows us that God did not want us to be afraid of God. God comes to us in the form of flesh in a baby because God wants us to embrace God. And so when Mary is holding the baby Jesus in her arms, she's holding God and, and so in Matthew's gospel, it says the three Magi men came from the east to worship the baby. They took this long journey. They took this long trip because they wanted to see the baby. The three wise men wanted to worship the baby Jesus while King Herod was not into the mood of worshiping the baby. Because you know the story, Herod was threatened by this annunciation of the, of the baby. Herod wanted to know, who is this baby that's claim, proclaiming himself as the king of Jews? Who is this baby? Because Herod saw himself as the one who had all power. And so the very fact that Jesus was born as the Messiah was a threat to Herod. You know the story. Herod was threatened. He was intimidated by this worshiping the baby. The first thing we know about worship is that we worship the baby Jesus because he was the king of kings. He was the Lord of lords. He was the Emmanuel. He was the one that was sent by God in the form of flesh. He was the king of kings. He was the gift that God had sent to humanity. But worship has to be reinvented now for our time. How do we worship the baby Jesus for Christmas 2023? Today is Christmas Eve and we're all in church. We're all gathered to remember the baby Jesus But how will we worship the baby Jesus on tomorrow? We'll all be with our families. We'll all be exchanging gifts. We'll all be hugging because our families are also important to us. But in the midst of tomorrow, can we remember to worship like the three like the kings did. They, they, they brought to the baby something. Three elements. They brought to the baby gold. They brought to the baby incense. They brought to the baby myrrh. 
And that shows us that in order to worship, there ought to be sacrifices that are made. There's something about sacrificing your praise for worship. Worship means that you sacrifice. Sometimes you don't feel like worshiping, but, but if you sacrifice your praise, you say, God, I thank you for being the baby Jesus, even when you don't feel like it. Worship requires sacrifice. What is your sacrifice of praise? What is your sacrifice that you're going to bring to the baby Jesus to celebrate Christmas in 2023? Let me tell you what happened to me. God spoke to me in three ways as Christmas was coming for this year. Let me tell you what happened to your interim pastor. As I was preparing for for this Christmas Eve service, I found out on Friday night that a group of young people from First Baptist Petty Memorial Church showed up, showed up. We need to give our young people a hand clap. All these young, we had about 10 young people here in this building on Friday night, two nights before Christmas, and we sat and we watched the birth, the nativity of Jesus, and all of our young people gave testimonies about the goodness of God and how God had brought them through this year. And I sat back and I said, wow, this is the amazing love of God. God is saying to you, to me, if you want to experience Christmas, I brought to you Christmas right here with the young people of First Baptist Petty Memorial Church. They were sitting there and they were articulating their faith for God, and I thought about the seeds of this church that has been planted in the lives of young people. We need to give Minister Tina and Minister Nelly and former Pastor Kang a, a wonderful hand clap for all the seeds because I'm just benefiting from the seeds that were planted before I became your interim, the seeds of young people who are germinating into becoming the future, the the leaders of Petty Memorial Church. We got some powerful young people in this church. But then another thing happened to me this week. On Thursday night, I was in on 32 Prince Street in Newark with, you know, the returning citizens. And I was sitting with this group and we were having dinner. And a woman walked over to me and she, she said, I understand you're a pastor. I said, yes, I am. Why, as I listened to her, her eyes began to well up with tears. She said to me, well, Christmas for me this year won't be quite as happy. She said, my son, and she gave me a picture of her son, Joshua, who was 31 years, who was incarcerated in the Northern State Prison here in New Jersey. She said, my son is not here with me anymore. She said, I'm going to miss him. He was 31 years old, and he is not here. She said, will you remember my son, Joshua, for Christmas in 2023? She said, will you... Tell your church about my son who has gone home to be with the Lord. And I thought about how God was sending to me the message of Christmas through this woman that I did not know anything about. She told me her story. She told me about her life. And I sat with this woman for a good 45 minutes, listening to her pain of her grief of her son, who is not here anymore. But then, finally, I experienced Christmas on yesterday. You heard me talk about Charlie last Sunday. You heard me talk about Charlie, who was embraced by my ministry that I worked on in Brooklyn, New York, through the homeless work that we did. Charlie 
is a member of the Trinity Baptist Church in Brooklyn. So I called Charlie yesterday, and I said, Charlie, how you doing, man? He said, Pastor, I got a job. I'm working now. And I remember when your church embraced me when I didn't have a house. I remember how you used to tell me that God loves me even when I didn't feel like God loved me. He said, Pastor, I know about the love of God right now because I, I'm doing so much better than I was seven years ago. And he said, thank you, Pastor, for being an agent of the amazing love of God. And I thought, church, that Christmas is not about selfishness. Christmas is about giving, sharing with the unfortunate sharing with those who have nothing and letting them know that Christmas is about the fact that for God so loved the world that God gave God's only begotten Son that whosoever believes in God should not perish but shall have everlasting life. But it all comes from the worship of the baby Jesus. Let us worship the baby Jesus. Let us worship the Christ-born child in everything that we do. Let us remember that Jesus is the heart of Christmas. Let us remember that Christmas is about the baby Jesus that was born. But this baby Jesus would become a miracle to the world And eventually the baby Jesus would grow up and he would become a man and he would die on a cross. And the Roman Empire would seek to execute him and destroy him because this Jesus that was born of a baby from a woman named Mary would become a threat to the world. And so he's executed He's put on a cross, and he dies on the cross, and everybody says, we got him now. He's dead. But oh, my God. Oh, my God. Three days later, he rose from the dead. And and they said, all he said, all power is in my hands. So this baby that Mary gave birth to would have power. His name shall be called Jesus. His name shall be called Wonderful, Prince of Peace, Mighty God. Oh, that's the good news. That's the good news of what Christmas is all about. May we experience that good news of Jesus in Christmas in 23. Because God knows we need some good news in our world today. Let us spread the good news. Let us tell the world about the good news of the baby Jesus that was born in Bethlehem. Amen.